So we're in Dublin for Fuse 2024. I'm here with uh, Rob Sony. He's VP of RAN Technology at AT&T, but also here at Fuse in the role uh, of, of Chairman of TIP. Uh, but we're going to talk briefly now about uh, AT&T's plans because everybody is kind of really interested in the announcement that was made last December, uh, a shift in AT&T's RAN strategy, working very closely with Ericsson. Um, here at Fuse24, um, you gave an update on, on how that relationship is developing. Um, can you tell us a bit about that? But mainly, can you tell us why AT&T took this decision to, to take what is a quite a radical and very significant step for a tier one operator. Indeed, I mean, I, I've heard it referred to as anything from courageous to, well, frankly not. Um, so I think that the, the key thing though is we are uh, in the middle of what I think will be a significant bellwether transformation for how do you deploy gear, but how you do uh, a modernization in a very short time period. Um, what we're looking forward to, uh, a couple of things. I mean, obviously we wanted to bring openness and programmability into the network. Uh, we wanted to have an opportunity for vendors, whether they come from the RAP community or from the radio community or elsewhere, to have an opportunity to participate in our network and bring innovation um, at different layers and at different levels. So what we think we've done in the past year or so is make significant progress towards that. Um, pretty soon it will become more visible uh, we have a lot of things in lab at the moment that will very soon spill into the field and several of them are already halfway into the field themselves. So uh, for us, we tend to think of it in terms of basically four pillars and four domains of things that we are working on. So our traditional RAN, our um, purpose-built RAN moves towards open, open network management, but also in support of open radio. So we'll be able to integrate third-party radio directly and we'll have a significant announcement about our first step there uh, with what we would consider to be a small cell, or we often refer to it as Quadrant 3 radio. So together with our partner, we'll be announcing something fairly soon uh, about what kind of radios we'll bring in on our traditional baseband. That traditional baseband is actually also in the process of being rolled out right now in the field. Okay. So first time we'll have an open, truly open baseband, truly open, capable baseband. we we'll start with uh, small cell radio. We'll move to DAS and then we'll move towards uh, first high-powered radio and then finally to mass and MIMO radio in probably roughly that order. And I'd expect a cadence of things to happen to us on roughly around a six to 12 month guidance against those four things. And then of course we look at our ability now to introduce open network management. It's important for us uh, because we move to a space where now we can scale network management which typically is uh, an elastic application as we introduce new applications, sure, but the thing is, base stations continue to generate more data continuously. So we need to be able to scale and size it according to cloud-based rules as opposed to the tr traditional appliance-based rules. So open network management will give us an opportunity to bring new third-party applications in, cloud orchestration in, consume real-time streaming events, and build an application suite across that that will help us, for example, manage between um, indoor and outdoor networks, public and private networks, but also create some different experiences, particularly for groups or categories of users. So for us, open network management is a, another critical p pillar. Um, no discussion around open RAN could be complete without cloud RAN. We are ramping down what we would consider to be our technology innovation trial and moving into a commercial realization specifically of cloud RAN. We're hoping to be able to announce significant numbers of cells that are deployed running commercial software uh, and commercial traffic early next year. Uh, for Cloud RAN. It'll be running on Sapphire Rapids, on Intel, together with Dell. Uh, we think um, this will be the first time any significant traffic volume will be covered in a brownfield on a full Cloud RAN based solution that is latest and greatest silicon, um, as well as support for massive MIMO, uh, with all respect to our competitors. So just leave it at that. And then, yes, of course, we face challenges because we are uh, a brownfield operator. So consuming all of these things does require transformation in the way you think about things transformation in the way that we deploy things, transformation in the way that we deal with and manage our vendors themselves. So a lot of transformation taking place underlying that is really about people and less about technology. Um, and then the last domain, of course, for us is finally the openness piece around Cloud Run itself. So we bring massive MIMO open, we bring traditional radio open, we bring network management open. So we are truly open when we get to that space. So overall, I think we cover the four pillars that I just mentioned. And it seems to me, and the way you were talking about this this morning, 
you know, as a brownfield operator, that what you're doing is probably very broadly applicable, probably to the majority of mobile operators around the world. You know, so far the excitement in Open RAN has been a lot about greenfield or rip and replace um, uh, uh, instances. But this is an overlay you're doing it, uh, isn't it? And do you, do, you, do you get the sense that a lot of mobile operators are wanting to know what at and is, is doing because they see what they might encounter in the near future? Uh, definitely, I believe so. And I think this is the opportunity, especially with some of the world being a little slower to migrate to 5G, um, and, and especially if you're do, talking about mid-band build-out. So, we prove out mid-band, we prove out 5G as a layer, specifically on cloud, it becomes an, uh, an easily consumed solution against a 4G deployment. And if they have only done lightweight deployments of 5G, then they can migrate very specifically over. And then, of course, they can look at the opportunities that are created with potential partners on third-party radio or also specifically on third-party applications. So, yeah, we think we are providing that blueprint. We also are a very traditional in our ways of working, the way that we consume things. We are very security conscious. We're very focused on that in particular, and we try to ensure that whatever steps we take as we move from uh, a world where things are appliances and locked down into where they're now servers and they could potentially uh, face disruption from unfriendly actors that we have, really this is the opportunity. So we think, despite the public conversation about openness on ORAN, we think there's an, uh, probably a more coherent conversation that could take place amongst the operators about how to ensure the integrity and the security of Open RAN. And so that's one of the things that we'll be looking to drive more effectively as we learn more in 25 about deploying. Uh, because I think some of the vendors that are out there and have done things in the greenfield environment um, maybe not have the same security posture as us. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, all right, brilliant. Rob, thanks very much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule. Oh, I very much appreciate having you. And uh, we look forward to the progress that uh, AT&T is making. Thank really you. interesting. Thank, Thank you. you.